Look with us in verse number 1 of chapter 3 of John. He says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now this wasn't some fly-by-night fellow. This wasn't someone who was on skid row, who'd never been to school, who didn't know. Uh, he knew. He knew the culture. He knew the law. He knew the religion. But one thing he didn't know, he didn't know how to get to heaven. <clears throat> Said the same came to Jesus by night. That's the way all sinners come. They come in darkness. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I, say, I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I had told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly, of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I believe right here is a crucial point in where God begins to reveal what he has tried to show to us from Genesis up to Matthew in picture form and in type form. You know, even when Adam and Eve had sinned, he showed us a picture of salvation when they sewed fig leaves together, which is works. And he showed them that they would have to be covered. Only something that God could do. Uh, you know, what God says here is important, but what he does not say is very as much as, much as important as what he does say. You know, look what he said, and this is what I want to preach on out of verse number, number 7. He said, you must be born again. See how crucial that is, Brother, Brother Ray? That's what he says. But what he does not say, you, he does not say, you need to know all these religious formats. He did not say that. He did not say you have to do good. He did not say that. Uh, have we have any parents here today? You anybody a parent? You're not going to accept that fact that you are one? Uh, you know, have you ever had a kid that's been mean? Sure. Have you ever been a kid and be mean? Do you know what? Nothing changes that status. You know, I, I, I always like what you said about telling your mom to shut up. I'd give $20 to have been sitting there when you done that. <laughs> I bet that went over like, great. Well, my point is this. Your behavior does not change your status. God loves bad kids. If he didn't, he wouldn't save none of us because we're bad after we get saved. So... What he has not said is it important, but the key point here is you must be born again. Now there's a few words I want to give you some definitions, and we, a, lot, a lot of times we overlook these little words. He said you mu must be. That word must, it means to be obliged to, or it means to be of necessity. Now God says if everybody on planet earth plans to go to heaven, you'll have to be born again. He does not. It does not matter if you're born in the hills of eastern Kentucky, or if you're bound. If you've been born uh, in Alaska, if you've been born uh, in Asia, it does not matter. The news is this: you're going to have to be born again. Now, it only makes common sense, brother Ray, for for everybody that's here. Everybody, they all got here the same way. 
Nobody come in any kind of way. You had a birth. And if you plan on going to heaven, God is telling us, you're going to have to do it again. Do it again. You're going to have to have the same experience again. That's why homosexuality is such a slap to God's face. Why? Because He created man for woman and woman for man so they could populate this earth. Amen. Amen. Make no apology for what God said. You know, all this gay movement and all that stuff, all that is, it's not, it's not them trying to have their way. It's them fighting God. That's what, it's, that's what it is. He said, there's another word found in verse 3 and in verse 6. It said, except a man. That word means unless. Unless you're born again, you aren't going to make heaven your home. That's the facts. Now, I'll just give you this word and just uh, before uh, it's called, you know, it talks about the spirit hit uh, listeth. That means the spirit chooses or where it prefers to go. See, the spirit don't move everywhere. It moves when we welcome its movement. Mm? Now, with that, I want to preach on this thought on being born again. You say, why do I have to be born again? First of all, you have to be born again because God commands it so. Right. Mm -hmm. God has told everybody through this Bible. That's why God has sacrificed His children and sacrificed uh, uh, missionaries and people all over the world just to get out the message, you're going to have to be born again if you plan on making heaven your home. Right. That's God's commandment. Right. That's His rule. You know, we so say, I don't want no rules. You will die and go to hell. You don't have to get born again, but you do have to get born again if you plan on going to heaven. You can do it your way, but your way will end you up in the devil's hell and you will exist there forever. That's God's rule. Huh? Look, it says, we see not only it's God's command, it's God's rule, but it's God's reach. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but, by the, by, but the world through Him might be saved. You know what God's reach is through His commandment? He never lets a sinner go to hell that He don't give them a way out. He reaches down through His Word, through His children, through His Spirit, and He's pulling people out of hell. That's what He did to me in 1977 on the, in the month of January. I'm telling you, God reached down in my muck and mire and misery and saved me. He not only told me what I had to do, but He gave me a way to do it. Uh, he reaches down for sinners. The reason we're still here is God's reaching down for sinners. Uh, uh, see, His command, it not only is His rule and His reach, but His command has restrictions. You can't come your way. Uh, you can't come, Brother Jordan, the way you want to come. Everybody comes the same way. Uh, just like we all got on planet Earth, through a birth, we'll all make it to heaven by birth. Right. Ain't that wonderful? Yes. That seems reasonable to me. Yes, sir. Right. That seems normal to me. Huh? A lot of things that people do wrong that I can kind of comprehend why they do it, but I can't comprehend why a man would want to kiss another man. I hope that don't offend you, but I'm just trying to say that it's normal for a man and woman to get together and have a family. That's normal. And if you plan on getting to heaven, you're going to have to do it God's way. Because God has restrictions. And if you're a parent and have a child, you're not worth salt if you don't have restrictions on your kids. My dad, he raised me and my brother by himself when my mama died. You didn't go... When he said you don't go, you don't go. And if you did, you wish to God that you might not know how to pray, but you'll find some kind of something to pray about. Amen. Huh. They call it child abuse. He called it spanking. Amen. Now, in this being born again, he gives us a commandment but then he tells us of the condition of sinners. 
Now, he tells us, first of all, that, it, that sinners are intelligent enough to comprehend this. <laughs> they are. Amen. Now, the reason they don't do it is because they're rebellious. Right. Now, look, I done showed you that Nicodemus was a ruler. He was a ruler. He was in charge. He was master. This guy wasn't no uh, dummy. Right. This guy had his act together. Right. You know, and that's the problem. Because you can have all the intelligence in the world and die and go to hell. Right. 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 Amen. Huh? There'll be people in heaven that could never write their name, Brother Brian, but they went to heaven. Why? Because it was a it was a something that God done in their heart. Amen. It was the Holy Ghost of God taking the word of God. See, that's what's happening today. That's how you get born again. You know how, how we have natural birth? We have a husband, we have a wife. You know how a person gets born again? We have the Holy Word of God, and the Holy Spirit of God takes that, and he ta the Holy Spirit works that into a man or a woman's heart and births them into his family. Amen. That's why it's very important, as Brother Jordan was teaching, that we have the Spirit of God keeping us in unity so the Holy Ghost of God can not only get God glory, but He can get someone saved. Yes. Huh? To intelligent. That word intelligent means, uh, means well-informed. <laughs> Evidently, who's in charge around our country, they're not informed. They're intelligent. You don't... I'm going to be honest with you. you. You don't have to have a doctor's degree to get born again. You know, years ago, Brother Ray, when I first met you in 92, when we was living over there, we had two, two dogs, a male and a female. Huh? And those two dogs had puppies. They didn't go to school. They figured it out. Sure. I'm just saying. Uh, this is not rocket scientists. This is getting born again. You don't have to be a genius. Sure. Uh, you just need to pay, take this right here and connect it to this right here and accept this right here. And you, you say, when can I get born today? again? Today. Right. When? Because today's all you got. Huh? Brother James, that's all we got. You know what? Somebody may not be back tonight. I'm not talking about because they don't choose. I'm talking about they may be laid over there in the morgue somewhere and it might be me. I don't know. But I'm telling you, today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. You need to get saved today because this is all you have. Huh? Now, this makes, seems like a contradiction of terms, but listen to me. They're intelligent. That means they're informed of what's going on around them. You know. But they're ignorant at the same time. Yep. Now, Jesus said, He said, you must be born again. And, you know, He says, well, how can this be? You know what? The world is going to die and go to hell, Brother Phil, because they ignore what God says. Right. They, I work with people and you try to talk to them about God and they tell you everything about him and you don't you can't get a word in and and the next thing out of their mouth is some uh, perverted vulgar vile thing they wouldn't know God from a greyhound bus you so you shouldn't judge them <laughs> I'm not I'm just I'm just inspecting fruit and if I go that if I go to Kroger and I pick up an apple and it's rotten I'm not taking it home because I don't eat it, rotten apples. Right. See, they're ignorant. What are they ignorant of? Of the facts of God and the facts about God. God is so holy. They said, well, a loving God, this is a thing that's been out through ages. A loving God would never send somebody to hell. No, a loving God will not let you trample the blood of His dear Son under your, under your feet. And He expects you to be saved. He expects you to get right with God. And they said, well, I, I just didn't know I needed to go. The reason they didn't need, no, they didn't need to go is because they didn't go somewhere, uh, Brother Josh, where they could hear the Word of God. Right. Huh? Because faith comes by hearing. It don't come by working. It don't come by doing. It comes by hearing. You know why people don't have no faith? They don't look at this book and examine this book. God, we're serving a God who cannot fail. He, he's never failed. Huh? 
He spoke this vast world into existence and never broke a sweat. What amazes me, and I've tried to picture it in my mind, how that he just uh, uh, took dirt and molded it up and breathed into him and Adam stood up. That's amazing. Mm. But then the last thing we see about the condition of the sinner is that he's a, he does get enlightened. See, you can walk out of here today lost as a golf ball in high weeds. But I'm telling you what you need to do to get saved. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to accept what happens. But you will have to accept the consequences. Right. Amen. Hmm? Going to hell is going to be the consequences. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? A life, uh, you know, I've tried to think about what would be the worst thing about going to hell. I, I don't know if there is a good thing. But no hope would be one of the worst things. To be in a condition where you could never, when you see everything that's going on around you, and you can't do nothing about it. And you cannot get out of there. Amen. Huh? Now, here's the, the key point. He compares, compares, don't, I'm, I'm from eastern Kentucky, so I don't talk like city folks do, so I just have to take it the way it is. He compares salvation to a birth. Why does he do that? Because not that he couldn't make it to where you couldn't understand it, but he makes it to where you can understand it. Because every male and female that has children knows how children get here. And so he says to uh, Nicodemus, he said, hey, I got some news for you, brother. You're going to have to have a birth. First of all, births are real look at all these kids look at them they all got here the same way we know you're here I can see you hmm. births are real do you know when a person gets saved you'll see it there'll be some changes made these people that get saved and the FBI can't find them they ain't, something ain't happen huh I'm just being honest. We need to get down where the rubber meets the road. A lot of people have some religion. A lot of people have some rules. But they don't have Christ. He said, births are real. I had no use for church when I was lost. These people that go to church, it, it, I, it, it blows my mind. They just go to, to, to show, to see, for people to see. Not Not me. I thought church was for old people and little kids. Now I don't think that way now. Because it's real to me. You can't have the Holy Ghost move in you and something don't change. Uh, I've said this and I'll just verify it. We've got uh, visitors when I was lost, man, I, I took up cussing about 12 years old. And there wasn't a sailor to come down the ocean that could outcuss me when I was 12 years old. That's just the way we did it. Not bragging on it, I'm just saying. What I'm trying to do is show you an example. I even tried when God was dealing with me to get saved, I tried to quit cussing. He couldn't cuss. Couldn't do it. But tonight God saved me. Something happened. That's not my lingo no more. Right. Why? Because what I got was real. Amen. Mm. Now, look at in a in this birth, God is not only real, but it's revealed. He says, Verily, verily I say unto you, verse five, except a man be born of water. Now, when me and my wife got married, and she was uh with child with our oldest we didn't know nothing about this stuff now I'm going to give you some of you kids things were different when I was a kid when I was a kid brother Brian nobody would ever say well that woman's pregnant they had slapped your brains out for using that term that was vulgar especially if you was a kid Y'all looking at me like I, I've got three horns and I'm just telling you how it was. Things were different. Huh? 
here's he reveals to us but what my point is this I remember the very morning that my wife I got up to go to work I sat down at the kitchen table like I always do was putting my work pants on work shoes on and I'm tying and I look don't get offended and the whole crotch of my pants was ripped out and I'm like man I got it so I thought she was in the bed but she was in the bathroom and I walked by her and she said hey I'm like yo my water broke I said I'll get out of here man I said I gotta go to work I ain't got time for this she said I'm telling you what's that's what he's saying here this physical birth is water but this uh, this spiritual birth is of the Holy Ghost see for those of you that may have kids in the future when your wife says that get her to the car because <laughs> that business is fixing to pick up huh. see this thing is revealed on how to do it I want to say this to you when you get to the book of John God starts making more clarification about how salvation works the farther to the right you keep going you keep going to Romans he talks about the in detailed justification and glorification and uh, salvation by grace he just keeps going telling more about the story but he tells us how this thing works see God is taking his spirit and he's penetrating the heart of God with what I'm saying it's not me I have no power no authority I cannot save nobody I couldn't even save myself but what I can do is I can take this book and hope that the word of God will be breathed from me to you if you're lost and save you Amen. the birth is revealed but then you see how man responds to this birth he responds like every man responds how can this be we always have to question how this can be because this is foreign to us because <clears throat> what we want to do to get to heaven is we want to do good uh, I remember brother uh, when I was at working with a fella he said I believe that if I help old people across the street that gets me points with God now let me say this I want to be nice it's always nice and good to help people whether they're old or young but that will not get you one brownie point with God in your position of going to heaven just won't do it and you know it's amazing to me all the people what they call good really ain't good huh see you can't take your standards and use your standards and think that your standards will mesh up to how God expects you to get to heaven won't happen won't happen now I'm trying to preach fast here we see the commotions of the new birth I don't know those of you that had children you are you know, he gets pretty exciting there for a little bit. Now, due to drugs and stuff that these ladies and I'm not don't 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 get offended. I know if I was going to have a baby and it was me, we wouldn't have it in the first place. We wouldn't it ain't, ain't happening. But when the the old timers, they had a lot of pain. Now, I'm not y'all looking at me like I'm being I'm me and mean. I'm not trying to be mean. But I'm saying th that he said, marvel not. You know what he says? The commotions is don't be amazed at how God says this has to be. God says this is how to be, just accept it and realize. You know what? I think this is the greatest plan ever was, Brother Jordan. I don't have to be good. Right. It does pay off to do that. Right. Right. But I just have to believe and God is a God that you can believe because he's never told a lie see we have this marvel uh, to see I, I would love I have been praying I would love to see somebody get saved 
Then we see that it's uh, the spirit has to be involved. See, we've got, and I, I don't want you to take me wrong here. We need to witness to people. But don't try to make to lead them down Romans Road before they get on the road. Uh, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to work in their heart. You, we don't want confessions. We want salvation. We want the real deal. That way we can change people's life. Uh, and it won't change without the Spirit. Everything we do, coming to church without the Spirit of God here, it's all in vain. We need God's Spirit to move down on us and breathe down on us and cause us to get excited. We got revival coming week after night. Praise God, we need to get excited about it. Amen. God might do something. Uh, amen. See, he says the Spirit has to be moving. And these churches, uh, I'd heard, I hope it never gets like that, I'd heard uh, years ago of a fellow, they had come to church, and this old gentleman, he died right on the front row. And they called the paramedics, and uh, the paramedics came, and he hauled out seven people before they got the dead guy. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> we need that Holy Spirit we need him to move around us I like it don't you Amen. I tell you what I like I like when singers sing and they begin to weep and the, they forget the song I, I, I ain't into entertainment if I, if I want to go to entertainment I'll go down to Rupp and see some of them guys do it they, they're professionals huh? commotions you know, it's a marvelous thing. A baby is a marvelous thing. Sure. See, he says the scene of the new birth, new birth is a heavenly scene. You know what we need is we need that scene to move around here where people are weeping. You know, I don't know, but the, see, nowadays it's a lot different. When I was, uh, when Rhonda and I had, had children, uh, nowadays, man, you go in there and put it on VCR. I'm like, you got to be warped to do all that craziness. Let your grandma and grandpa come in while your wife's giving birth. I'm like, really? I don't know, Brother Ray. They went too far for me. Uh, no. I'm like, I'll pass. But see, it's something that's out of this world. When somebody gets saved... Uh, you know salvation takes place on earth but justification takes place in heaven hmm? uh, that means at the same time a person gets born again in heaven they get justified you can't feel justification but you can feel salvation because justification has to do with the law let's move on huh then God begins to clarify what it's going to take for you to get saved. Jesus said in verse 14, He said, I'm going to go to the cross. He tells Nicodemus, He said, like Moses lifted up that serpent, I've got to be lifted up. You know what Peter fought against? He said, not so, Lord. They're not going to do that to my Lord. You know what he said? Get behind me, Satan. You know what he was saying? It's a must that I go to Calvary. Here's what God's going to clarify to everybody in here. You will never make it to heaven until you point your eyes toward the crucified Savior on the cross. No way. There's a cross that Jesus bore that everybody that goes to heaven gets under that cross in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, I look at verse 15. I'm closing. Everybody that gets saved, he's going to clarify this. You'll have to do it by faith. Look, he says, For whosoever believeth in him, in who? Jesus. You know what God says? He, here's what he says. He don't want you to do nothing. Do you know everybody that's born don't do nothing? Right. Think about it. Yeah. Do you remember being born? I don't remember it. 
I'm talking about this physical one. I don't remember it. But this second one, I remember it. Uh, do you remember it? Uh, I remember it. But the first one, I don't remember. And I didn't do anything for either one of them. My mama done all the work. Hmm? I'm not trying, I don't want to go into all that because we got children here, but I mean, but you know what I'm talking about. Here's what, here's the, here's the deal. There's going to be some pain in a childbirth. And there's pain. Jesus suffered on Calvary so that you could be born again. And that's what he's clarifying here. You got to believe that. You say, well, I just don't think I can believe it. You'll never make heaven your home you'll never have a relationship with God until you get to the point where you can believe it it takes more faith to believe that you come from a, from a monkey than that you come from God right. listen to this uh, verse 16 probably the greatest verse that everybody talks about and I'll be closing for God so loved the world he clarifies the reason you're going to get saved it's because of his love huh? now remember this God didn't just love you he so loved you and that word so love that word so it means in like manner nobody ever loved me like Jesus nobody ever cared for me like Jesus did nobody, here's, a, here's a, a God man that walked up Calvary and uh, they, uh, they laid him on the cross and he just laid his arms down and they started driving nails there nobody in their right mind would do that you, you take me to Calvary I'm going to be fighting what little strength I got and I sure I'm not going to lay my hands down so you can drive spike but the God of heaven he done that why because he so loved you and he so loved me that I could have my birth and become born again and become part of the greatest family that's ever been known to mankind God so loved I want to say this to you in closing You'll never make heaven if what you're trusting in is rules, religion. I work with a, a lot of people. They're Catholics. And it's like they get a special privilege. I want to say Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Church of God, Church of Christ. You don't get no special privileges. You'll have to be born again. Brother Josh, you come. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.